Hey, welcome to a new video on my channel. On this tutorial series, we are going to be focusing on sending emails with Django. Um, by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to uh, add an email address inside of this form, uh, submit that, which will then trigger it to send an email, and also record that in the database. Uh, and the users will not just receive a plain text email, but they will actually receive a beautifully formatted email. Um, with customized variables, user information, and even links uh, inside of this email. So uh, it's not just about sending plain and boring emails, but it's actually about sending these beautiful templates and uh, adding links to emails so users can receive beautifully formatted emails through your Django application. So this tutorial on, the, on sending emails with Django is split into three different parts. So today, in this particular video, we'll be focusing on uh, configuration uh, and sending basic emails with Gmail uh, through Django. In the next video, we will be start using uh, HTML templates to send really nice looking emails uh, yeah, with some help and some nice formatting. And in the third and the final video, we will focus on passing variables and links into our email templates so that our emails are customized uh, to the user. So the focus of today will be on three main actions. Uh, we will start by configuring our Gmail account so we can send emails uh, with Gmail through Django. Uh, next, we will be changing our settings at PyFile uh, to also enable messaging inside of our app. Uh, and thirdly, I will show you a very basic example of sending emails in Django. Uh, so, yeah, so you get a little bit of a feel on, on how that works. Um, and we're going to jump straight into our Google account and see how we can enable Gmail to send emails through our application. So one of the first things we need to do is change some of the settings uh, of our Google account to enable Gmail to send emails for us. So you can see here that I'm, I'm on my Gmail account um, and in this, from this account I'm going to send my emails. What I need to do to be able to actually do that is click on my Google account and go to manage your Google account. So here we need to make some small changes. On this tab, you will see uh, yeah, a number of options that you can change, and we are going to go towards the security tab. Because one of the things that is key for us here um, is the two step verification. So, uh, what you can already see is that I've already set up the two step verification. Uh, if you've not done this already, please make sure that you do, because by doing this, we can enable uh, the setting of app passwords. And app passwords is what enables your application to actually send emails for Gmail. So once you've set up this two-step verification uh, with your phone number, what you can do is click on it so it expands. And find my password. Let's get that out of the way. And here you will see that my two-step verification is on. And if I scroll, scroll to the bottom, you can see that I have app passwords here. Um, if I even further expand to app passwords, you can see that I've already created two here. Um, and what you can do is go to the bottom here, select an app. Uh, in this case, it's going to be Otter. I'm just going to call it Django 3. And by giving it a name, you can generate the app password. That's password to password. Can actually use to then uh, yeah, put in your settings and send the email to your Gmail. So very important, I'm going to generate it here and you will see your password here. Now important to know is that you will only get to see this one once. So copy it uh, and store it somewhere that you will remember it because you cannot uh, go back and look at the value afterwards. So copy the value, generate it done. And uh, yeah, now you've enabled your Google account to uh, send emails. You can now use this password and, uh, and go to our code. So now that we've changed the settings of our uh, Google account and we've enabled Gmail to send emails through our application, we also need to make some changes to uh, the settings of our Django project. So I'm in the settings that by uh, file and we need to add several things to be able to send emails with Gmail. So the first thing we need to specify is our email backend. And this value needs to be equal to django.core.mail.backend.smtp.email backend. Next, we need to specify our email host. 
and our email host is going to be Gmail because we're going to be sending emails through Gmail. So it's smtp.gmail.com. Our email port is equal to 587. And we're going to specify that email use TLS is true. And TLS means transport layer security, which takes care of some privacy and some security stuff. Uh, next, what we need to specify is our default from email. And our default from email is going to be my app. And uh, this is actually the value that the user is going to see when you don't specify a from email. So if I go into my email as an example here, you can see uh, here that the value displays Google. Uh, in this case, if I change it in my settings to my app, the user will see my app. The last few things that we need to specify are our email address and our password. The email address is specified under email host user and the password under the email host password. Uh, you can see here that I've put in a fictional uh, email address and a fictional password. This is where your actual email address would go, and this is where your app password would go that we just generated um, in our Google account. Now, one of the things that you will not notice is uh, that these values are now openly visible inside of my settings at PyFile. This would mean that if I would uh, publish this to a GitHub repository uh, with my email address and my app password there, people could use these uh, settings to uh, send emails of their own. Uh, and I don't really want that because I kind of want to have these yeah, as a secret. I don't want people to know. So uh, to realize this, we can use environment variables. And this is a way to actually uh, yeah, specify a value. Uh, based on that, um, you can take a look inside of your local computer, or the app will take a look at your local computer for your cloud service, um, Yeah, where you've set your password and your email address. So you don't need to specify these values hard-coded in your settings. Uh, and we can do that by importing OS on the top of our settings file. You don't need to install any packages for this. It is uh, available by default. And then we can set our variables inside of our local computer. So if I go to uh, my Windows tab and I start typing environment variables, you can see that I can edit the system's environment. And then, uh, yeah, this system properties window will open uh, under the advanced tab, you will have environment variables. And you can see that I already have a number of uh, variables specified. So even for this particular example, I've stated that I want to have a variable called AA email host user, which has the value of the email address that I will be using to send emails, and also AA email host password. And in here I've specified the value of one of my app passwords that we just generated from Google. Um, and I'm going to use, I'm going to refer to these variable names inside of my code, and then the app will know that it needs to check the value and actually use that when sending these emails. So how can you uh, create these emails? Well, it's very simple. Over these variables, you click on new, and it will prompt you to uh, set a name and a value. So for uh, email host user, I've set, I've set that one as the variable name, and the value was equal to uh, my test g8. Nine at gmail.com. You can do the same for your password, and uh, yeah, then we can specify those variables in our code. Um, one thing you need to uh, pay attention to is that you need to restart your computer after you've set these variables uh, because then your computer will also take them into account. So if we now go back to our app code, we can quite easily refer to our environment variables in the code. So simply saying os.environment.get. The environment variable that I want to get for email is equal to AA email host user because this is the name that I gave the particular variable that stores my email address. Same goes for the password here. I've given it the name AA email host password. And just like this, uh, Django will now go and look for my environment variables with these names and get the correct values and uh, yeah, make sure that my email and my password is not exposed uh, in my code. So we've enabled Gmail to send emails from our application and we have enabled our application to send emails with Gmail. The next step is to actually go and send this email. Um, the page you write down is the Django documentation on sending emails. Uh, you can say that we can do it quite easily with the Django.core.mail module. Uh, and as an example, you can see that it's very basic. We simply need to import send mail from Django.core.mail and we can then send a mail with that function where we only need to specify our subject, our message, the from email, and the to email. Um, yeah, that's all we need to do. So let's uh, go into our code and actually uh, make this change. 
So let's start with a rundown of the, of the code in our application. Um, in our models file, you can see that we have one very basic model uh, called emails, and this is where we track all of the emails that we're going to send with the application. Uh, you can see that we are uh, requesting a subject, a message, and an email. Um, based on this model, we have created a form where the user needs to import or in, insert the email uh, of the recipient, um, and that's then being sent through to our uh, view in the end. Uh, you, so you can see here we have a very basic email view, uh, which is using one of the templates. Uh, it's going to yeah, provide us with all of the emails that we've sent, and we're using the email form to, uh, to get those responses. And if that form is valid, this is the place where we will uh, yeah, uh, carry out some actions, such as both sending the email to that email address, but also recording that inside of the model that we've created inside of our application. Looking at our HTML file, it is very basic. So in the top, we just have a title saying sending emails with Django. Um, a little bit further down, we have the form where we simply request them to enter the email and also then a submit button to submit that to our backend. Uh, and on the bottom, we have a table which goes through all of the mails that we've sent. So we have an overview of what has been sent so far. If we then take a look at our app here, um, yeah, this is what the front end looks like. Indeed, here the form that will enable you to enter any email address and send that mail. And as you can see, I've already done a couple of test runs to see whether this is working uh, as I was expecting. So now let's make some changes to the code so we can uh, send an email to the users and also record that inside of our database. So to do that, we need to go to our views.py file and um, yeah, basically fill in this piece of code after our form is valid. And we've just seen it in a documentation that one of the first things that we need to do is import sent mail. So we're going to type from django.core.mail, import sent mail. And um, if you remember from the documentation, it's quite easy. You simply refer to the function, open the brackets, and we need to uh, provide them with a subject. We need to then provide a message. We need to provide a recipient list. And we need to also provide the from email. And just to note down, we are going to also do fail silently i'm going to equal that to false so this is enough to actually send our email so now let's just uh, create a subject for this email i'm just going to set it as email from our django app for the message let's just keep it basic for now we can state that this is uh, a message from our app and the recipient is going to be equal to the value in the form. So in this case, it's form that cleaned data, and we are looking for the email field. Okay, so now that we've defined these, these values, we can say that the subject needs to be equal to my subject, the message needs to be equal to my message the recipient list is going to be equal to my recipient um, in the from email i'm actually going to pass in none because if you remember correctly uh, in our settings we have defined that um, the default from email is my app meaning that if we don't fill in this value we'll simply see my app uh, in emails i'm fine with that yes, so that's good for now um, so we don't need to change that one and fill silently is false. So this will be enough to send our email to the recipient. So let's also store this value inside of our database. And as you recall, I have um, a model called emails, and I only need to provide uh, the subject, which is again equal to my subject. I have a message which is equal to my message, and I also want to store the email address that is equal to 
my recipients. Make sure the implementations are correct here. And to make sure that it's actually saved, let's also do obj.save. Let's save our code and now check whether this actually works. So on the bottom here, I have copied and pasted an email address to which I'm going to send it. I've also opened that here on the top. Uh, so now let's just refresh my front end and paste in the email address. And if we click submit, it should add a different row here and it should also provide us with an email there. So let's do it. There we go. You can see that we have recorded the response inside of uh, our application. And if we go to our actual email account, we can also see that we will have received an email on our testing. Yeah, you can see here, this is the latest one that I've sent. Email from our Django app. And on the bottom here, you can already see this is a message from our app. So uh, yeah, it all seems to work fine with this basic example. It's taking a long time to load them. There we go. This is a message from our app. And this is actually all that we're going to do uh, inside of this tutorial. So what we've covered so far is uh, yeah, how to configure uh, our Gmail account. We've also taken a look at uh, how can we um, actually make sure that our app can send those emails by changing the settings of our application. And we've shown you a very basic example of how to use uh, send mail uh, to get emails to your recipients. And in the next video, we will be focusing on using beautiful HTML templates so that your emails do not look like this, but actually have a very structured and well looking templates. Uh, yeah, so you can uh, make sure that your users get beautiful emails. So thank you very much for, for watching this video uh, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing you on the next one. Bye bye.